What's up guys, I'm gonna unbox and review the Keychron Q6 HE. This is a HE standing for Hall Effect. It's basically a magnetic switch keyboard so it doesn't need to physically touch. So it should be very interesting because I haven't actually used the Hall Effect keyboard but I've heard a lot of good things about it. And when Keychron reached out to me, they're like, hey, do you wanna try our new keyboard? I was like, absolutely I do. So there is a quick start guide we could connect with the 2.4, the Bluetooth or with USB-C. And we got backlits, we got adjust this, adjust that, we got Mac windows, bunch of options, factory reset and everything. Let's look at the keyboard. And, uh, okay, well, let's look at, we got some user's manual right there. All right, so we got the key removers, they're hot swappable. We got a USB-C to USB-C, and then there's a USB-C to USB-A adapter, so you could plug it in this way as well. Nice threaded cable. We got some keys for the Windows users, which I'm assuming the Mac stuff, my, yeah, the Mac stuff's on the keyboard already. We got the dongle right here, and we have a USB-C to USB-A. And then we got some, basically probably for the feet so it won't move, and some screws. Right off the bat, this keyboard is heavy. This is the heaviest keyboard I have seen. Oh man, this is like, this is legit. This is metal. This is aluminum. This is legit. Man, this is amazing. You can actually control when a key press is registered. So unlike a mechanical switch that something actually needs to touch, this one, there's a magnetic sensor. So you could literally barely touch it and it would register it or not. Or you can have it go more travel and then it registers it. And that's something you can control, which is fantastic. It's backlit RGB. We got a volume control knob right here, which is awesome. It's like those old school stereos and like just wow. I, I can't wait to try this thing. Oh, we got the Mac buttons right here. You can pop in the Windows ones if you want. And uh, we got the PlayStation keys right here. I just realized that USB-C goes here. We got the Windows or the Mac. And we got the 2.4. We got the wired. Or we got the Bluetooth. So to remove the key is pretty straightforward. You basically slide this in. It comes out pretty easily. And then with the other side of this tool, you go from uh, vertically, basically. Make sure that slides in and then just pull it out. So it's pretty straightforward. So it's a very linear feel right here. And if you, if I turn it over to this side, you can kind of see that the magnet's moving closer and further away. And you can actually control that distance to register a key press, which is awesome, especially for gaming. Pop it back in, it's pretty straightforward. You just put it in the same way it came out. And then put the key. And there it is. Much, much, much later. So I've been using this keyboard for about three weeks now. I'll do a quick typing test. I'll show you guys some of its key mapping features, which makes this thing phenomenal, especially if you're working between Mac and Windows. And sometimes I'm on here, I'm doing Control C, and it's like not doing anything. And because I'm on a Mac. So I'll show you guys some of that stuff. Let's start off with a quick typing test. I'm probably not going to do super well, but let's just try it out. Is there something like a little bit easier? Okay, this one was a little, there were less apostrophes and stuff like that. Let's just go with this. All right, ready? Oh, come on. Ah! <laughs> All right, I kind of did kind of messed up a little bit there and there. Okay, not terrible. I've done better than this. I've also done worse than this. So 
we'll accept it. 62 words per minute. So overall, the keyboard feels very nice. It's very smooth. It's very quiet. I don't know. It's not super quiet, but it's, it's kind of like the soft typing feel. And you can actually map these. In fact, you can map any key to anything, but you can map these to certain things. So this X button, I love that they have it all the way on the right side because I can have that for the shutdown button if I wanted to. And then this thing is fantastic for the volume control. And if you tap it, it mutes and tap it and un unmutes. And these buttons actually do the same exact thing as this one. So I don't actually use F10 to F12 for the volumes. I just use this as the volume and it's, it's just awesome. Like it feels very high quality. Everything about this keyboard feels high quality. So one thing that would be nice is if the keys themselves also lit up, that would be nice. If like the character with the A or the S or D, like if that lit up at night instead of just kind of around it. Now you could still see what you're typing just because there's a lot of light and you can actually control the brightness of the light as well inside Keycon Launcher. But that would be one nice thing if it had that, if it can, if it can shine through. All right, so for the Keycon Launcher, you just open up a browser and not just any browser but I'm gonna demonstrate this. You just type in Keycon Launcher, you open this up, and it's, there's an option to connect. Now it says, please connect your device to the computer using a cable or the 2.4. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this cable because this is connected, so I'm gonna turn off Bluetooth. And I'm just gonna plug this in, and we'll connect it here. And then when I was first doing this, I'm like, oh, refresh, refresh, I click connect, whatever I do, it's just not working. I'm like, what's wrong with this thing? I tried Safari, that wasn't working, and then I was like, let me try Chrome, maybe it's browser-based. So I went to Chrome, I typed in Keychron Launcher, and this thing showed up. I click connect, shows up right away, so it turns out Chrome supports this. So if you're using Safari or DuckDuckGo, as of now, it doesn't look like it supports it. I didn't try any other browsers, but it looks like Chrome works. So keep that in mind. Okay, now here, there are, there's a lot here, and literally I can make an entire video just on this section, but I'm gonna just try to go over the main things just because it's super cool. Okay, so number one, there's a few profiles that you can set. So you, I could set it on the 2.0, and this is like how much trigger distance you need to press because of the hall effect, because it's basically looking for that magnet. And so, for example, um, let's just set it to the 0.6. So if I set it to the 0.6, if I literally almost touch A, it'll recognize it as a key press, okay? Now, I can change that all the way from 0.2 to 3.8. So if I click 3.8, I click Submit, it changes it. If, you, if you've changed it, let's say if I click S or if I type S, if I change it, let's say to 3.8 and I click away, it shows up as green. It's not submitted. So it's still on the previous setting, which happens to be 0.6. But once I click submit, then it takes this into account. Now, if you guys notice, if I'm hitting D, I barely tap it and it shows up. Now, if I do the same thing to S or A, if I'm doing it to S, it's like, nope, 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 nope. I almost, I basically need to almost touch the bottom of the key for it to recognize it. So you can control this individually or you can set this as a whole. So you can actually control your distance. You got the rapid trigger over here as well. So there's a lot you can do for just how much travel you want, which again is fantastic, especially for gaming. Now key mapping is my favorite feature of this keyboard because it allows you to change certain keys to do certain things. Now, if you're on the Mac mode, zero is your default and one, layer one, is if you're holding the FN button. So as you guys can see, the FN button is set to ML1. So when you're holding that, these keys get activated. When you're not holding it, these keys get activated. If you're on Windows, then it uses two as your default. And then if you hold FN, which if you see that it says ML3, it activates these things. So you can set these keys to do certain things. So basically your options are you can map these keys or you can map these keys which would require a function then that key press basically. All right, so I might have mentioned that I switched between Windows and Mac and sometimes I do Control C, Control V and then I realized I didn't do what I thought it was doing. So I can actually click Control here, I can click on Layer 
and I can actually remap this. Was it layer or was it custom? If it was like one of these, okay, it was a custom. I can set this to L command. So now I can actually use this. And if I accidentally do control C, control V, because I remapped it on Mac to command, it'll actually do what I'm thinking it for it to do. So if I open this up and type in, I don't know, let's say I type in something, I can actually copy this and then paste it here. And then I, I say something else and then copy that, go back here and paste that. And so now I can actually, if I do copy paste, it's actually going to do what I think I was trying to do, which is really awesome. I can also change this to CTRL, but because I've been using Mac uh, as well, I'm sometimes I do remember to do command C and command V. And so it's, so basically this is gold. Now I can map F13 to F16, which are basically the PlayStation buttons, or what I could do is I can map and it would require a function press. So if I wanted to, I can go to special key, I can hit the circle, which this is the circle button, and I can say, oh, mission control, that, that seems useful. And then I'll map this one to launch pad, okay? So now, if I hit these, it's actually not going to do what I wanted to do, but if I hold function and I hit it, then it will do what I wanted to do. And this is what I was basically talking about earlier. So if you hold function, um, it goes to layer one. So that's cool. And then on top of that, you can set up your own macros, which I did just for fun, M1, M1, but we'll just do a new one because you can set up up to 15. So I go to M2, at least that's what it looks like off this menu. Uh, so I go to M2, I click start record, and then I'm gonna do a sequence. So I'm just gonna do control copy, or in this case, I'll do command copy. So I'll do command C, let go. I'll do stop record. I have to click submit. And so this is my copy command and I do M3 and then I'll do start record and then I'll do command V back, stop record, click submit. So now M2 and M3, this is copy and this is paste. So if I wanna not do command C, if I just wanna hit a single key, I can just do copy and then hit another key and do paste. So I can go back to key map and let's just say, let's, let's go to, yeah, let's just do it here, uh, F13. So F13, I will go to macro and I have to remember which one it was. So M2 was the one that I set. I have to click this and then click M2 and then F14, I'll do M3. So now if I type something, let's say Bugatti, I do that, I could literally hit circle and then go here and then hit paste. And that is fantastic. Now you can have your macros do other things as well, not just that. You can actually do a whole bunch of stuff and that, it's genius really. It's just, it's phenomenal. I love this keyboard because of these two features, but really, if I can only pick one feature, it would be this. <laughs> the fact that I can now do comfortably do Control-C, Control-V, and then I can erase words and stuff like word for word with this, because I'm just so used to hitting Control, it's just, it's just gold to me. So, and then this is where you would do your firmware update and all that other stuff, basically. But yeah, and then you also have the lighting mode. So there's a bunch of lighting modes. You can set the speed, so if you're doing a transition, you can set the speed for it to like go a lot faster or go a lot slower. In fact, let me make this room dark so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is what it looks like. So this is kind of what you see at night and you could slow this down. You could speed it up. There is, I believe, 22 different lighting modes. Yeah, solid splash. So some of these, like when you type, so if it, it does this on the key that you're pressing from the, so I mean, that's pretty cool. And again, you can adjust the color and the speed for that. And uh, yeah, let's just go through it. So you could do none, uh, one, and then you can also do it by just changing, by hitting this button as well, the light button, but we'll just, we'll just do that. Breathing, you could speed up if you want to speed that up. So there's a lot of band spiral valve, cycle all, so this is on the faster speeds. Cycle left to right. Cycle up and down. Rainbow. 
cycle out in, cycle out in dual, cycle pinwheel. Some of these, are, because it's on the fastest mode, it's going a little too fast. Dual beacon, rainbow beacon, jelly bean raindrops, pixel rain, typing heat map. So this is this this one's pretty cool. Like if you if you're typing and it does a for the keys, digital. Reactive simple. This is just the key that you're typing. Reactive multi wide. Multi reactive multi nexus. Splash. And solid splash. And again, you could you could literally choose there's so many colors, so if we just go to the solids, there's a lot of colors you can... It's fantastic, basically. There's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff with this keyboard. There's a lot to love about this keyboard. So I brought out my tablet because if I hit FN2, it actually mapped it to my tablet and I can actually type on this thing as well. Erase, I can do the volume control from here, I can mute that, unmute it. It's really phenomenal. So I can actually map this thing to five, up to five different computers. Three via Bluetooth, one via Wi-Fi with this uh, USB-A dongle right here. I don't know if the, there it is, the camera just focused on that. And one via wire, via USB-C, the wire. So there's that. It's very high quality, it's very heavy, it's very nice feel, it's just a beautiful keyboard. Yes, I do actually need to get a longer version of this. I did order this wooden rest, this is actually wood. It's not, um, and it's very comfortable, at least for me, it's actually very, very comfortable. I bought the full size of this, so I'm waiting for that to come. In the meantime, I will be using this one because this is the one that I had. And uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic keyboard. If you guys have questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.